All right, we're going to talk about a way to write the shorthand electron configuration. Before we talk about that, let's just get the regular electron configuration for sulfur. Okay, so if you're looking at the periodic table, you know, you start with the 1s, you got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and then we see we stop at 3p4. Okay, all right, now let's write the electron configuration for neon. So again, we start at 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Okay, well, what do they have in common? Well, you notice that they both have all the way up to neon's electron configuration in common. We can use that and take advantage of that to use a um, shorthand electron configuration, okay? So we can just put neon's electron configuration, so we'll just say NE for the part that was neon's, and then we can just write the rest of it. So this tells us that this is sulfur. Okay, we still have the right number of electrons because neon has 10, and then we add the others. Okay, so basically we're just going to write the valence electrons and the core electrons or the inside electrons will be represented by a noble gas. Okay, all right, so let's look at this. Here are some step-by-step -step ways to do it. So you're going to go up one row and over to the noble gas. Oop. Write the element, the noble gas element symbol in brackets. Then you're just going to continue on with the configuration as normal until you reach the actual element you're looking at. All right, so we're going to look at germanium. Germanium is in this little block over here. My cord's in the way. All right, right here. All right, and to look at the noble gas beforehand, we're going to go, oops, we're going to go up one row and all the way over, okay? That is the noble gas argon. So we write argon in brackets, and then we just continue on with the configuration. So we got 4s2. 3d10 and then we stop at 4p2 okay so those last couple are the valence electrons and then argon we were able to substitute in for all the beginning stuff okay so that's going to be the end of noble gas configuration all right well, now let's look at orbital diagrams orbital diagrams are just a different way to represent the electron configuration now our our orbital is going to be represented by a box okay so how many will each of the box of uh, how many boxes will each of the orbitals have? Well, S just has one. P has three boxes that are all connected. D has five boxes all connected, and hopefully you're realizing that this corresponds to the number of orbitals for each per energy level. And then F has seven boxes all connected. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, all right, so those are S, P, D, and F box. So now we're just drawing it out. We're going to make sure that we indicate our electrons with arrows. So the arrow is the electron. Each box can only get two electrons, and the electrons have opposite spins. So one spins up, the other spins down. So we have to make sure that we indicate that as well. All right, we're still going with the same... Um, ideas before of filling the lowest energy level first. Okay, so we always start with 1s. This is called the lazy tenant rule because people always want to be on the first floor before they want to climb to the, you know, seventh floor with stairs and no elevator. All right, and we also have to contend with what's called the empty bus seat rule or Hun's rule. So basically, that says that when you have multiple sublevels per um, energy level, like in the P, D's, and F's, that each individual, um, let's back that up, okay, each individual orbital, each box, will get one electron before anybody gets a pair. Empty bus seat rule, you always go to the empty seat first, and then if no empty seats are available, you go to the one with one of them. So you see here, it was filled based on one up, one down, which is not correct, Everybody gets one, and then somebody gets a pair. So the second picture is the correct one. 
All right, so let's do the orbital diagram for oxygen. Oxygen has eight electrons. The electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Okay, so we draw a 1s box, one up, one down. And then we have a 2s box, one up, one down. And then we have a 2p box. Now remember in the 2p, you go one up, one up, one up before anybody gets a pair. Okay, and you see this matches directly with the electron configuration. So the exponent tells you how many arrows you use in your box. Okay, and then these correspond to the box. Remember, S only has one box, P has three connected, and then one up before anybody gets a pair. All right, well, let's talk about stability. When you think about this in terms of the orbital diagram, it makes a lot of sense. What would be most stable? Well, most stable is going to be any full energy level or any box that has everybody one up, one down. Everybody has a pair. The next most stable is going to be your completely full energy levels, even though maybe the entire energy level is not filled. Okay, so a full S, or a full P, a full D, a full F. Now over here, what's special about this last row, this full energy level, is you have a full S and a full P, or in this case down here, a full S, a full D, and a full P. Okay, so that becomes very important. Then the full, and then the half full. Half full, you're talking about like having on the P orbital, you'd have one up, one up, one up. That's half full. Or D, you'd have five all going up. Okay, so they're all going in one direction. And this does affect stability. So most stable is a full energy level. Second most stable is a full orbital, so full S, a full P, a full D, a full F. And the um, third most stable is going to be half full orbitals.